golfing event and there were 24 golfers teeing off at the same time? Were you there for that? Do you know anything about that? It could have been. I can't recall. Where, where was it? What happened? I don't know. Was this uh, last week? Uh, if you can't remember last week. Well, I, I thought we had a big group on Sunday after the Bristol race. Oh, maybe that was friends. it. Okay. Uh, we all went to a place that's supposed to race track called the Old Farm. And there had to be 24 of us. And it, it, it got rowdy at times, to say the least. There you go. Yeah. So the answer is yes, we think. You know, I talked to the guys from Aerosmith, I can't remember either. <laughs> For different reasons. For different reasons, completely different. I was also told, after we did the thing here last time, uh, I guess it's February race, when Tom Cruise was here, he asked to either ride with you or hang with you. Does that, uh, did that surprise you? Did you know Tom? Did you um, know he asked to hang out with you? Well, I know that, um, I knew Tom was coming, and I've seen Tom uh, a couple different times since our paths have crossed. But where that real tie is, is that when they shot Days of Thunder, uh, Tom and Rick Hendrick became very close. And uh, Tom actually stayed in Rick's lake house during the filming of that. And, uh, behind the scenes, a lot of you know, what the movie was about was about Harry Hyde, who was Rick's first crew chief. So there's a friendship there. And actually, through me doing Regis and Kelly uh, a couple of years ago, Tom gave me his number to give to Rick. And that got them reconnected because they had lost track of one another over the years. And Rick invited him out to a race, and then he came out for eight months. So. Has it taken you aback? With two champ one championship is amazing. Two championships, the number of people that you have been running across, like Tom Cruise. You know, it, it, what amazes me is when, uh, and we're not, I'm not in the scene very often, but uh, in the past we've left this race and have gone to different functions in LA. And to have people uh, recognize myself and, and to give me credit for what we've done means a lot. But we're not in that scene that often, so it's not one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. I'm a huge fan, I'm a strong fan. Love him or hate him, the guy won seven through crosses, and I, I oh truly God. respect what he's done. And, and he beat cancer. Yeah. And right there. there. Yeah, he had the band on. Yeah. I, I, I'm standing at the door of the restroom waiting for my lovely wife to come out of the bathroom at this Oscar party, or Grammy party, whatever it was. And uh, she comes out, she stands next to me, and Lance walks out, and he's looking at my wife, and I'm like, yeah, that's right, she's good looking. And, uh, <laughs> Then he saw me and he goes, oh man, hey, you're, the, you're the NASCAR champion, congratulations. So that really caught me off guard that here's a guy I've looked at who's just scoping on my wife and recognized me. So that was one of those moments where I'm like, oh, is pretty big. There was a, at the celebration at Daytona for the 50th anniversary, is that what it was? Yeah. There were a lot of other Daytona winners there. Were you blown away? Had you met all of them before? No, I hadn't. Was there anybody who was a bigger smartass than you thought they were going to be? <laughs> It's, I didn't say much because the, the stories flying around and the ribbing that these old drivers were giving one another, it, I was trying to think back what it would be like in the day to see Mario and Foyt and Richard and all those guys really giving each other a hard time. Because I know how it is today. We all give each other a hard time with driver intros. They were all back together and out of shape and telling war stories. Uh, it was cool to think back to what it, what it was like back in the day. Yeah, there was a lot less control over it. The, uh, since there's so many people here for the first time, well, let's just recap for a moment here with the Jimmy Johnson Foundation. What inspired you to start doing this kind of stuff? It wasn't that you had a lot of time on your hands and you're looking for something to do. It wasn't like, I've got a beautiful wife. Uh, what to do? I want to do guard work around the house. <laughs> Might have had something to do with that. Might have had something to do with that. You'll remember, I mean, we went to hospitals and stuff in the Mickey Thompson days and would visit children that were you know, in, in the hospital for whatever cause or reason. And through that, it just put it in my mind that our sport and race cars in general uh, really relate to kids and the appreciation that somebody in the hospital has if you make the time to come see them. So it really started at that small uh, moment at 15, 16 years old. And I've stayed involved with a variety of great charities over the years. And Kyle and Patty, Betty sat Shani and I down uh, three years ago now. And said, look, if you want, you can do a lot more. If you, if you start a foundation, uh, the focus for your sponsors, your fan base, you, you'll, you'll show that that supports you and you will have more support than you can ever realize. It's going to be a lot of work yeah. and uh, it's going to take a lot of time. But if you want to go down that road, we'll help you and, and it will be extremely rewarding. And that's really where we got our start. Uh, my wife and I have always been involved with different charities, even before we were together. Uh, so it's, it just feels great to get back. And now at this level with the foundation, and have the fans and sponsors support that. Uh, it means a lot to us. We have four homes in, in uh, El Cajon right now that are being built uh, through 